Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little minute since I've been here, but I've been kind of busy. I actually just started to go back to school. Um, and so that's been kind of taking up a lot of my time. I'm trying to be more consistent. So if you want to learn how to make this vintage Internet Explorer glow in the dark poster, stay tuned. I copied and pasted uh, the logo to my Adobe Illustrator artboard and I grabbed the pen tool and the curvature tool to trace over the two shapes within the logo. I then highlighted the center shape of the E and the E and I subtracted it within the Pathfinder panel so that you know the E shape could be hollow in the middle. And after that, I am ready to export the shape onto Blender. So I go to File, Export As, and I make sure that it's an SVG. I'm ready to import it onto Blender. So I go to File, Import as SVG. I highlight the object and press S on my keyboard to scale it up and RX 90 to rotate its axis 90 degrees. I want to add dimension to the object, so I go to the Data Object Properties panel and I go down to Geometry and I add an extrusion. I do that to both of the objects. I already did Sculpt, so I right-click my mouse and convert the object to a mesh. And then I go to the Modifier Properties panel and remesh it. For this, I'm using Smooth and I bring it up all the way to 9 and I apply it. And now I can go over to Sculpt Mode and I'm going to be using, in this case, the draw tool. I mean, I usually use the inflate tool, um, but yeah, later on I will also use the inflate tool and of course the smooth tool to smooth everything out. And we're just gonna go ahead and repeat that process to the other object. And before I even do that, I wanted to add a material. So I slid a new panel over to the side and I changed it over to a shade editor tab. And from there I removed the existing material. And I also wanted to add an environment texture. Uh, so I switched from object to world and I went to add a texture environment texture and connected those two nodes. And I added an HDRI. I get all my HDRIs from polyhaven.com. After I added the material and the HDRI, this is what it ended up looking like. But I kind of wanted it to have more pizzazz. So I decided to add a vintage keyboard for the background. And I got an already pre-made vintage keyboard from sketchfab.com. This is the specific model I ended up going with. If I can, I will link it below in the description box. And also, I want to take this moment out to say that if you're enjoying the content and you're learning anything from this, I would really appreciate it. If you liked, comment, or subscribed, um, that really helps to boost the algorithm. And I really appreciate it and the growing community we have here on YouTube. Now back to the video. I went ahead and imported the model that I just downloaded from Sketchfab. It was an GLB file, so I just went to File Import, Import as GLB, and it should pop up within your downloads. This was the original poster setup. Um, I did enjoy it, but I did feel like it needed a little something more. So I was like, why don't I make the letter into a like glow in the dark? type of situation and change the type of bits. So that's exactly so what I, I did. got this material from the Blender Kit add-on. Um, it's free. I mean, it has paid assets in it, but it's mainly free. And this specific material I'm using is free. So I just looked up glass and I clicked on this material right here. You are able to change the color of the glass, as you can see here. And there's also an emission section. Uh, so that's what actually makes it glow. 
So I put up the emission strength. You can adjust it to your liking. Um, I kind of had it at like a midway strength. And another tip um, to make like the glow in the dark stand out more is I made the HDRI a little bit darker. Um, and also just picked an HDR that was naturally dark. Uh, so now I'm ready to render. So I just have to go to render, render image. And I am rendering it within the cycles render engine. And once it was done rendering, I enhance my renders on Photoshop by just using like the automatic, you know, like auto tone, auto adjust. And I also go to the filters and sharpen the image as much as I want to. But that's my last little tidbit. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys in the next one. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down below and I will be sure to answer them in a timely fashion.